what happens when you push the SOS button on your satellite communication device. But I first want to talk about risk management because I feel like going out with the idea of, well, I bought and I activated and I'm using a satellite device, that should be my risk management plan. And I absolutely disagree that that should be the only thing that you prep for when you are headed out on a trip. This is simply a tool for you to use in emergency situations and for communicating by satellite when you are out of service from cell towers. So what does a risk management plan look like and why is it important? Well, a risk management plan is the preparation that you put into a trip ahead of time to say, here are the things that I might expect or anticipate to see happen for the route and the trail that I am going on that could lead to some kind of accident or potentially an emergency situation. That doesn't necessarily mean that those things are going to happen, but if I'm headed out in the winter, for example, my plan should include how am I going to handle the really cold temperatures? And a lot of a risk management plan comes down to good decision making. And how do I ensure that when I'm going on this trip, I am making good decisions that don't allow for accidents and emergency situations to take place. Now that is not in any way to discount the ability for freak accidents and things to happen when you are out on a trip. That is unavoidable things that are just part of the situation or the scenario of being out in the woods. You could trip and fall and hurt your wrist. You could fall into a lake and get really cold, have cold temperatures overnight, and get hypothermia. You could be exposed to the sun in way hotter temperatures than you might have anticipated that could lead to heat stroke. All sorts of different things could take place that are out of your control, but it's still important to have as part of your risk management plan, what if something like that happens? How am I going to respond to that emergency? Now, how a satellite communication device comes into play in a risk management plan is this is a tool to help you communicate with emergency services to help an evacuation take place that would get you to definitive care to help you get taken care of. But what happens when you are using a satellite communication device and you push SOS? Specifically, how does it work on the Zolio satellite communicator? Now, before you initiate SOS on your Zolio device, I think it's important to consider what it's like to be in an emergency situation that warrants using the SOS function on the device. And honestly, that is gonna be so dependent on so many different factors, but I think it's important to remember that that's typically going to be a high stress situation. There's a lot going on, a lot of decision making that is taking place, and so, understand that when you push SOS and activate it, that you've got help coming to help you for emergency situations. So when you are activating SOS on the Zolio satellite communicator, you've got two scenarios that you would find yourself in. The first is you have the device only and it is not connected by Bluetooth to a cell phone. How that functions is to activate, you would open the SOS door you would push and hold the SOS button for three seconds. After that three second time, this will go through a series of lights and tones. To let you know that the device has activated SOS and it is contacting the emergency response coordinator to then call out search and rescue to come help you. In addition to that, it will provide your location and GPS coordinates to the search and rescue operation to then come and help you with whatever situation you find yourself in. Should you need to cancel the SOS activation on your device, you would then again open the SOS door push and hold the button for five seconds and it will go through the cancellation process to say 
to the emergency response coordinator that we no longer need search and rescue to come to our location and help us out. All of that information is listed on the back of the Zolio device as a reminder of SOS instructions and how this functions on the device. So now how does SOS function on the device when you have your cell phone connected by Bluetooth to the Zolio satellite communicator? Zolio recently came out with an update on the device that allows for access to what is called progressive SOS. What this means is through the device on your phone, you are able to initiate SOS and then send your location and through the progressive SOS screen, you are able to have back and forth texting communication with the emergency response coordination partner that is allowing updates to be sent to the search and rescue operation from you to give an update on exactly what's taking place at that time, as well as to receive information from that emergency response coordinator that is providing information on maybe an estimated time of arrival or how they might be coming to complete and take care of the search and rescue uh, situation that's taking place, whether that's by letting you know that they're coming by foot or ATV or even by helicopter based off of the information that you are providing through the texting and the chat feature to give them information on exactly what is taking place. Within your Zolio account, you are able to set up your SOS contacts to say, these are the individuals that I want to be contacted when I activate SOS on my device. The emergency response coordination partner will call those contacts and let them know that there has been an SOS activated on, in this case, Devin's device, that uh, search and rescue is on their way and will provide updates as uh, we have them essentially. Now I recently went through the process of doing a test SOS activation on my Zolio and went through the whole progressive SOS function to make sure that this functions correctly. And this is something that if you have a satellite communication device of any brand, I would highly recommend learning how to do a test SOS activation through whatever emergency response coordination partner is in your area to see how it functions and what that process is like. It is very educational, very helpful, and honestly provides a lot of validation of the reliability of this device. And I'm glad I went through that process because now I know exactly how it functions, what to expect, and what that looks like over time. I'll also mention that as SOS is active, this will provide an update of your location every six minutes while the device is in the SOS function. And that is super handy because maybe your rescue involves moving your team, your partner, yourself, or whatever to a specific location that you maybe have communicated or to say this is where I am going and I would still like help but I don't need help in this location so every six minutes as you are moving they are able to receive information on exactly what's happening in your location so that they know where to go as opposed to getting updated on here's the initial location that was during the activation and then you end up somewhere else and that turns into a whole bad situation. The other thing that is super critical uh, that came from personal experience from a friend of mine who used his Zolio device to activate SOS and have search and rescue uh, help with a search and rescue emergency situation and that is once SOS is active, the device is very active meaning it is sending locations, it is checking for messages on a regular basis so that anything that would be coming from the emergency response coordination partner is hitting the device and updating you. And that is also connected to your phone, which is then using a lot of battery life. And because of that, it's really important to carry 
a battery bank of at least 10,000 milliamp hours, in my opinion, so that you are able to keep your device charged at all times at the highest amount possible for whatever conditions you find yourself in, as well as keeping your phone charged as much as possible. Because worst case scenario is the device, you were able to activate SOS and then your device dies and you don't have the ability to then have that communication back and forth with the progressive SOS to get the information back and forth that you would need during that search and rescue operation. My recommendation at this point would be for the Zolio or any other satellite communicator that you have that you take the time to read the information and the materials available on their websites of how these things function, how the device functions, and the best uses for it so that you know exactly how to use the device when you are out in the field to make the best decisions possible and get the most out of your uh, investment into a satellite communicator. If you have questions, leave them down in the comments section. Would love to uh, have a conversation about using these devices and maybe your experience with them as well. But Zolio Satellite Communicator, I love this thing. I love the functionality of it and highly recommend it. If you guys aren't subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe. Appreciate you watching today and hope you have an awesome day. We'll see you later.